In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A great miracle takes place in today's Gospel reading. The servant of a centurion lays ill at the centurion's house, and the Lord in His great mercy heals the servant without even visiting the home. Then the Lord greatly commends the pagan centurion's faith, saying to him, Verily I say to you, that I have not found such great a faith, not even in Israel. Whenever we read the Gospels, particularly the ones that deal with miracles, our minds tend to focus the attention on the miracle, on the supernatural event, and not on the conditions that have prompted a loving God to perform them. Today's Gospel has everything to do with the centurion himself, with him. He is the focus. For today's miracle happens as a response to a man of great faith standing before the Lord. God was moved by this man. And so it behooves us this morning to ask, what did he do that was so right? Why was he so special in the Lord's eyes? All of us, dear ones, have friends who are ill, family members who are sick, who are suffering in great pain. They seek comfort, relief, restoration of their health. How often do we pray and pray and to no avail? How great would that be the experience to witness this type of miracle in our own lives? Indeed, what we see here in today's Gospel, the miracle of healing, doesn't happen often. For every healing of a humble servant, there are thousands upon thousands of people who continue to suffer despite the prayers and despite the pleas of loved ones. And that the church today presents the person of the centurion as the ultimate example of who we have to be to help those who are sick, those who are in great pain. We need to examine him. We need to study what he did so that we can grasp why the Lord himself thought so highly of him. The centurion was an officer, a representative of the great Roman Empire. History tells us that centurions were men of force and that they weren't necessarily emotionally connected with others. And so one of the ironies of today's Gospel lesson is that this man wasn't like the typical centurion. His way of life impressed even God himself. One of the biggest misconceptions of today's Gospel is that the Lord didn't visit the man's house and that somehow they continued to be strangers because of this. But make no mistake, this man was closer to God than, he even, than even he realized. We are reminded by today's Gospel reading, beloved, that God is moved by extreme acts of love. God actively seeks out selfless people. He seeks out people who choose to love irrationally. And he wants to live in the house of their heart. God, who is defined as love, seeks out his own. And when he lived as a human being, as he traveled the land with his disciples, he searched for those who had deep faith. Sadly, he didn't really find it with his own people, with the chosen people, with the people of Israel. This is the great tragedy of the Gospels today that he finds what he's looking for in the strangest place, in the pagan centurion. Listen to the words of St. Nicholas Velemovich. When the Lord Jesus appeared in the world, the Jewish people not only descended in their blindness and ignorance of God's will to the level of pagan people, but by their darkened spiritual sight and the course of their hearts became in many ways lower than the pagans. We find in the story of the centurion health among the sick and great sickness among the healthy. And if you know the gospel, you know that this isn't the only time the Lord highlights the love and faith of those who weren't his chosen people. As Christians, if we're honest with ourselves, we have to admit that this is a problem that continues even to today. Like the Jews of that day, we are our chosen people. We are God's children. But the lack of faith among the faithful is a bigger problem today than we realize. 
living in a secular society, a society that is increasingly becoming godless. It's easy to believe but not have faith. Easy to claim that you're a Christian but to function in society as if you were an atheist. In presenting the gospel reading of the centurion before us this morning, the church is sending us the message that the key to the development of faith is love. That if we find ourselves lacking in faith, which happens from time to time, the key to get back on track is love. And not just love, but irrational love. In today's gospel, the centurion does something unheard of at the time. He actually cares about the health of his servant. In a society where serv servants were considered to be subhuman, if your servant was sick, in that society it wasn't hard to find a replacement. The Lord was touched first and foremost by the irrational love of this man, a love that went against the collective wisdom and conscience of that society. It was because of this love, this love for his servant, that the centurion's reply of faith carried great weight for the Lord. Without this display of irrational love, there is no remark from the Lord of this man's great faith. Without this love for the centurion, that the centurion has for his servant, he stays at home. He doesn't meet the Lord. One can see a, a cause and effect relationship here between love and faith. This is a very important point for our spiritual lives, for all of us, as all of us have struggles. All of us have prayers that go unanswered. And sometimes we wonder why. Why isn't God listening to my prayer? Perhaps the difference has more to do with how we love than anything else. And yet the crisis of our times today is that we struggle to understand what love really is. Love today, as defined in the world, has been associated with pleasure. But in Christianity, love is identified with the cross, with crucifixion. Indeed, how a man defines love dictates the type of faith he will have and he will develop. One of our tasks as human beings is to come to the realization that there's a difference between human love and divine love. Human love is conditional, it's contractual, it's measurable, it's limited. Divine love is unconditional love. It's love without limits. Divine love is always life-giving. We have to aspire to be divine love. We have to make the cross the symbol of our love and not pleasure as society tries to tell us. You know, all of us have life-changing moments in our lives. We have events that, that change us for better or for worse. And as Christians, we have to make the life-giving moment of our life the cross. What happens on the cross has to shape us, has to shape how we see reality, how we relate to our friends, to our loved ones, even to our enemies. And we have to be proactive in this endeavor. For we really think about it, the two qualities a centurion exhibits that please God, the qualities of selflessness and of great faith in God, are two qualities not valued much in society today. A world that we live in is producing a narcissistic and faithless generation. Any decision, beloved, to love outside of ourselves and our needs is considered an irrational act according to the wisdom of the world today. It doesn't make sense to love people the way the centurion does. You don't get ahead in the world. You don't leave your mark on the world if you do it that way. And yet we're reminded in today's gospel that faith and love are related, that they aren't to be seen exclusively, separate from each other. For when we display one and not the other, beloved, we mock the Christian faith. We become poor examples and many times we look downright foolish. There is a sad story of a famous philosopher, Mahatma Gandhi, who was intrigued by the Christian church. He read the Bible and was intrigued by the teachings of Christ. So much so that one day he decided to go to a church. And he walked up the church, he opened the doors, he was greeted by a faithful person, an usher, who looked at him and said, Sir, 
you have to leave. We don't serve your kind here. So Gandhi left, the famous philosopher. And he was quoted later as saying that he would believe in Christianity if he never met a Christian. He would believe in Christianity, in this wonderful faith of ours, if he never met a Christian. Faith without love leads to distortion. It leads to embarrassment. This is why the church in her great wisdom puts a wonderful gospel reading of faith and couples it together with the epistle. The epistle today is St. Paul's beautiful words on love. St. Paul tries to box in what love is. He talks about suffering. He talks about pain as being love. St. Paul says in a letter to the Corinthians that you can have the gift of prophecy and you can speak in tongues, but if you don't have love, you have nothing. You don't even have real faith. That is why today's gospel is so important for us. This is why the church in her wisdom highlights a centurion for us because it shows us that the road to great faith begins with a commitment to divine love. May the grace of our God lead us to the ideal of divine love and may our gracious and loving God be as pleased with our faith as he was with the centurion today. Amen.